Hello and welcome to your 88th SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca and tonight I want to talk to you about specifying criteria while you're filtering a trace and for those of you that didn't tune into the last tutorial uh, well and for those of you that did you'll remember that I said to go ahead and leave the trace up I instructed you to uh, stop the trace or pause the trace but leave it up however if for some reason you didn't watch the last tutorial or you didn't leave it up no big deal because we're going to run through the whole thing again right now except for we're just going to do it a little faster this time so without further ado let's do that so let's create filter and run a trace using SQL Server Profiler as sort of a recap we're going to all programs we're going to SQL Server 2012 folder we're looking for performance tools and then we're looking for SQL Profiler okay now we're going to go up to file we're going to click on new trace and it's going to ask us to connect and I want to connect to this guy here alright we are good to go and then here in the trace name if you'll remember or if you weren't with us on the last tutorial we want to name this long running stored procedures so alright long running stored procedures good uh, the template we're using is standard default and for those of you that want a better explanation of all this, you can go back and watch my last tutorial. Uh, we're leaving these unchecked. We are checking enable trace to stop time, which pushes that an hour into the future. Then we're going over here to the events selection. We're unchecking everything here. And then we are going to check show all columns and show all events boxes. Then we're going to scroll down and we're looking for the SPs, the stored procedures. And we are looking for SP completed, right here, and SP, SPMP completed. Okay, we're good to go there. Um, now what we were going to do is we're going to go over and click on organize columns. Alright, now we're going to scroll down here until we find text data. If you remember from the last tutorial, if you were watching, I told you to go ahead and move this all the way up to the top. Well, I did that, except for I moved it all the way to the very top above column, and I really wanted it right here. So, no big deal, but anyways, just in case you noticed that. Um, so, okay, we're good to go here we can go ahead and click OK there alright okay and then finally we just go ahead and click run okay and then depending on what's currently being used uh, on your instance of SQL Server you may or may not see any events being generated okay alright so but we can just go ahead and stop this now so this is where we left off on our last tutorial. So, alright, now moving along, now we're really actually getting into what I want to cover here with tutorial 88. And uh, so, concerning filtering a, a trace, you can do a couple of things to minimize the amount of information captured by a trace. The first is to limit the number of data columns included in a trace event. A data column is an attribute of an event class that can be stored in a trace file. The availability of a data column depends on whether or not it is applicable to the selected event. The second is to include a trace filter. You can specify filters that limit the trace to a specific database, to a specific connection, by the duration of a query, or by application name. Trace filters can be based upon several other criteria as well. Okay. So now that we covered that, um, what we're going to do now is we are going to go to File up here, and we're going to go to Properties, and again, make sure that this is Stop. Uh, you know, it's great out here, Pause or Stop, but we want that to be Stop. But we're going to Properties now, okay? 
Now here we are back at this familiar window that we just saw a minute ago. And we're going to the event selection again. Now we're going to click the column filters button over here. All right. Now in the left pane, we want to select database name right here. Okay. Now once we select that, we want to expand the like tree right here. And we're going to type in AdventureWorks 2012. All right. Good to go. Uh, now we're going to go right under it uh, to below. We have duration. So we're going to select duration. And uh, then we're going to greater than or equal. And we want to expand that. And we want to type in 5,000 right here. Okay. All right. And then we can go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to go over to SQL Server Management Studio where I already have a script typed up waiting for us. So you're going to want to go ahead and type up this script here. You can save it uh, once you're done. We'll go ahead and type this guy up and then go ahead and execute it. All right. Commands completed successfully. This is good. This is what we wanted. Now, uh, we're going back over to our SQL Server Profiler. And uh, what we're going to do is we are going to run the trace. So, we can do that right here. By hitting run, trace is running. Alright. Now, we're going back over to SQL Server Management Studio again. And I have another little bit of code, a little two-liner here. We're using AdventureWorks 2012. We're executing bbo.usp git department. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute this. Now we want to return to SQL Server Profiler. In about seven seconds, two events will be captured. It should be up, ah, and there we go. Exactly what I was looking for. So you'll notice that the first row that has text data um, contains a T-SQL command, which causes the query to essentially pause execution for the amount of time specified, seven seconds. In the case of this stored procedure, all right, now, if you return to the stored procedure and remove that statement and rerun the query while the trace is running, I'm talking about this over here, Okay, so if we return to this and remove that statement and rerun this query while the trace is running, we should not see any events captured. But do not modify this query because we're going to be using it again later. Okay, so, alright, now let's go back over to our profiler. Okay, now that we're back over here at the profiler, if you want to go ahead, if you haven't yet, you can scroll see, get familiarized yourself with everything that is listed here in the profiler. Anyways, proceeding onwards, now we want to stop the trace. So we are going to go to File and Stop Trace. Alright, now we're going to go File, Save As, and then Trace File. And then, if a long-running stored procedure trace already exists here, you can go ahead and select it and click Save. If not, enter long-running stored procedures in the file name text box and click Save. All right. Good to go. Um, let's see what else. Okay, that's it. What I wanted to show you for this tutorial. Again, do not close the SQL Server Profiler as you're going to use it in the next tutorial. And if you do close it, no big deal. You'll just have to go through it all again. All right. Thank you, and I will see you in the next tutorial where we're going to be covering and creating trace templates. Thanks for stopping by.